Welcome to our course in management accounting and welcome to module one. Whether your course is called management accounting, cost accounting, managerial accounting, you are in the right place. Those are all the same thing as far as I'm concerned. I'm a college professor. I've been teaching management accounting for years, and I'm so excited that you're with me today. So when I start my class, we start just by talking about accounting generally. And actually, I hone in on financial accounting because all of my students will have already done a financial accounting class. And I ask them, like, why do we do that? Like, why do why does financial accounting exist? And a lot of students say, well, it's to do journal entries, because obviously that's a huge topic in a financial accounting course. And some say, well, it's to produce financial statements. And I, I think they're right, but I also want to know the who, like who's using this stuff? Why do I have to make an income statement, a balance sheet, a statement of cash flow? Who am I doing it for? And then students will often raise their hands and say, well, we do it for investors, of course. And certainly investors are an interested party and investors observe the financial reports and they make decisions, right? They decide whether they want to buy the stock or sell the stock or short the stock, whatever. They make decisions about buying and selling shares. So definitely, yes. But I say, well, wait a minute. I own my own business, uh, TonyBell.com, uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, I don't have any investors. It's just me and I don't produce financial reports for me. I, I don't need to do that. And they say, well, what about the bank, right? You might have lenders and lenders will be very interested in your financial reports. And I say, that is is very true, but I am debt free. I don't have any lenders. So do I need to make financial statements? Because I don't have any investors. Well, I'm the only investor. I don't need to see my own financials. Uh, I don't have any lenders. Do I need financial statements? And the answer is, Yes, I do, because there's one more interested third party who's very interested in my financial results. Can you guess who I'm going to say? All right, enough, uh, uh, enough suspense. Uh, the government. Uh, I have to, even if I don't have investors, even if I don't have lenders, I got to produce financial reports for the government. Why? Because the government wants to tax me. They want to take their 20% off the top. So I'm obligated to make financial reports for the government. So these are really the three key outside constituents who are interested in our financial reporting. And you'll notice they all have something in common. Whoa, that's an ugly little uh, uh, thing. But anyway, these are all outsiders to the company and they're all using my financial statements, my financial information to make decisions about the company, right? They're deciding whether to invest, whether to loan the company money and how much to tax in the case of the government. So that's what financial accounting is all about. Financial accounting exists for the outsiders. So I guess you're going to guess what my next step is because we're in a management accounting class. Why does management or managerial accounting exist? Well, I hope you're saying for the insiders, managerial accounting exists for, I'm bad at drawing these things, uh, for the insiders and the investor, the banker, the government, they're making decisions about the company. Insiders are making decisions for the company and they need very different information. They have very different information needs. So I want to work on this table and just discuss the like needs of these users and the differences between financial and managerial accounting. So we've said the who financial accounting interested in supplying information for outsiders, people outside the business, managerial accounting interested in providing information for people inside the business. And we also said the types of decisions outsiders are making decisions about your company, about the company, Again, whether to invest, whether to lend, how much to tax. Insiders are making decisions for the company. And let's talk about the types of decisions a manager might make. Let's say I'm the manager of an Apple store in downtown Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I'm in British Columbia, Canada. Now, some people will hear that and they'll go, oh no, this guy's teaching me Canadian accounting. Management accounting is universal. You don't need to worry about, oh, it's a, if you're in the US, if you are in Europe, Asia, Africa, wherever you are in the world, this stuff will apply and it's very much universal concepts. Um, so uh, I, I'm the manager of an Apple store in Vancouver, Canada, and I decide one day I want to move the display of iPads from the back of the store to the front of the store. I decide, okay, iPads are going to the front and the headphones are going to the back. 
Well, that's a decision I might make as a manager because I just, it's my gut feeling. iPads belong at the front. I can track that decision through data, right? I can get sales data on my iPad sales versus my headphone sales. And I can say, well, before I made the change, this was the sales. After I made the change, this was the sales. Was this a good decision or was this a bad decision? That would be a very much using managerial accounting data to make a decision for the company. Should I keep it going or should I switch back, right? Like that, that's a decision I might make. I could make staffing decisions based on that. You know, I can use accounting data to determine, oh, this person hasn't missed a day of work in a, a year. Maybe they deserve a reward, right? At the annual party, I'm going to especially uh, remark on, on an employee's performance, and I use accounting data to do that. So that's managerial accounting. Now, the investor, they don't really care that the Vancouver, Canada manager put the iPads at the front or the back. They want to know, did Apple make $98 billion and was their earnings per share above $3.55 this quarter? Uh, that's what they're interested in, right? They don't care what happened in one specific store, in one specific city, in one specific province, in one specific country in the world. They want the whole thing. And they want to say, how's Apple doing big picture? The insider, they don't care the big picture. They want to know, oh, the iPad sales in my location are up or down, right? Very specific data. So the scope here is totally different. Outsiders want to get information about the whole company. Insiders want segment information. I'm going to say small segment even right? Like they just want their specific area and maybe even just a sub area within it. They don't even want the whole Vancouver store. They want to know iPad pro within the uh, Vancouver downtown location, right? Like they're, they're not even interested in iPhone sales or something like this. Um, so very much a, a smaller segment, uh, because of the nature of who the outsiders are, bankers, investors, government, and because they're not part of the company, standard setters have said, they need to be protected. And how do they get protected? We're going to put rules on how you make your financial reports. Your financial reports have to be consistent from one company to another. Apple can't report one way and have Google reporting a totally different way. The companies have to follow generally accepted accounting principles. Gap, whether that be US Gap, Canadian Gap, IFRS, or some other rule. And if they're going to be on financial uh, stock markets, they have to be follow SEC rules, right? Or stock exchange rules. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of rules to be followed. And I'm just going to say strict, right? Like the rules are fairly strict around financial accounting. Well, what about managerial accounting? There's no rule that says, hey, when the manager moves the iPads from the back of the store to the front of the store to see how they're going to sell, there's no rule they have to follow up on that. <laughs> There's no obligation to do any of that. They don't have to track any data. The manager can just say, I feel like that's going to be better. And they move them to the front and they go, well, I think it was better. And they don't have to look at any data. There's no obligation. So I'm going to say loose rules here. Now, oh my goodness, my writing of the word loose. Is, so maybe I'll say no obligation to even use management accounting data. So the rules here are loose maybe optional would be a better way of saying it because you don't have to follow up and check the data or the sales better or worse. You don't have to do budgeting or planning or performance management to see how your company is doing or to see how your little segment within the company is doing, but you should. <laughs> And that's what this course is all about, right? It's all about tracking those small micro level uh, decisions. How about the timing? Well, uh, financial accounting, because of its nature, because we need to have reliable information because we're protecting those outsiders because of who the users are, we need to protect them. And so because of that, we want reliable numbers. And if you want reliable numbers, you got to be talking about the past. You got to be talking about stuff that already happened. So when you look at financial accounting, it's about last month, last year, last quarter, right? It's, it's all set in the past. Managerial accounting is often about the future. It's about our plans for next month. Oh, we think we're going to bring these in next month. You're, you're budgeting, you're planning, you're predicting the future. It can also be about the present. What are we doing today? And it can involve the past. But future is like a pretty key feature 
in management accounting because it's about making your plan. Oh, next month I'm going to uh, bring in extra iPads. I'm going to set them up at the front. I'm going to make a new display. Okay, well, I'm planning for the future. Then when it happens, I in the present, I got to execute and then look back on it a month from now and see, did it work? And that's sort of looking at the past. So it's future, present, and past, but a, a big focus actually on the future here. Um, what about reporting? Well, the financial reporting, financial accounting reporting is delayed. It's slow. And what does that mean? Well, let's say, uh, I know Apple's year end isn't December 31st. Let's pretend it is. So Apple's fiscal year end, let's say is December 31st. So they want to prepare financial reports. Well, it takes a couple of weeks for them to clean up their year end. Then KPMG or Deloitte or PWC, their auditor comes out and audits their financial statements. And it's going to be three to six weeks, maybe even more before they're telling shareholders anything about the numbers. So financial reports, you're, learning what happened a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, you're learning about the past tense and it can be like the distant past. Managerial accounting information, you get immediately in the moment. If I move those iPads up to the front of the store, I know today, how's it working today, right? You, you might want to wait a little bit and know, okay, well, how was it a week or a month later, but you can get data on day one. It is immediate. And so I'll just say fast or faster, right? Um, depending on the company. Okay, so those are key differences between financial and managerial accounting. And that's gonna be a cornerstone of chapter one of any managerial accounting class. Other major topic we are gonna cover in chapter one, we talked about, you know, it's called management accounting. When I took this class 20 years ago, it was called cost accounting. Uh, a big topic of conversation in chapters one, two, three, four, I think maybe even chapter five is cost. How much stuff costs? So it's a quirky, tricky concept and it's trickier than you might think, but we'll address that in future videos in this chapter and in future chapters. The best way though, the absolute best way to do accounting, the best way to learn accounting is to do lots and lots of problems. So in our next video, it's a problem on financial versus managerial accounting. And in future videos in this chapter, it's a problems on costs and figuring out cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. But we'll worry about that in a future video as we're working through problems together. I'm so happy you're here. I'm thrilled you're with me. I think it's going to be a great journey together and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye for now. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.